Hi everybody, my name is Justin Harrison and I am your instructor for this class. And so what I'm going to do is spend a, a lot of time make, creating lectures about informal logic and uploading them and hopefully you'll find that they're a good help in this class. I'm going to try and circumvent some problems that I've seen in the class and also give you more information about this, this field. And um, I just wanted to start out by saying that I love logic and you should too. And so as you, as you work through this class, I hope that you'll always remember this. Just always tell yourself, I love logic, I love logic, I love logic, even if you don't really love it. And you should always do that with any class that you take, especially the ones that you hate the most. You have to psychologically convince yourself that it's actually worth it. Um, that it's worth the time, the effort, the hatred. Because if you psych yourself out, or if you think that it's not fun, or that it's not interesting, it's gonna be that much harder to complete the class. Now, is this a form of lying to yourself? Yes, but it's a good form of lying to yourself. But I think in this class, pretty much everybody loves logic anyway, so you probably won't find yourself falling into that in this class. So, let's just start from the beginning. Logic is all about arguments. Now, you're probably thinking, I know what an argument is. <clears throat> Uh, it's it's a shouting match and one time I got in this argument with my neighbor and then we called the cops because he was yelling at me telling me that I need to clean up my lawn and I was telling him that this is America and I, I can do what I want um, but that's not an argument although there was a f there were a few elements in that example that I just gave of argumentation so in logic it's not a shouting match it's not something that ends up in calling the police or throwing somebody outside or getting in a fight Instead, an argument and logic is just a series of statements, a series of sentences that support a conclusion. So an argument is a list of true or false statements that support a conclusion. So an argument is a list of true or false statements that support a conclusion. The statements that support the conclusion are called premises. So an argument has to have two components in order to be an argument. The first component that an argument must have is that it has to have premises. Now, premise, a premise is just a fancy word for a reason. Whenever you draw a conclusion on something, you ought to have a reason for that conclusion. So premises are the reasons that you have, that you hold, for a specific conclusion. The second part of an argument is that conclusion itself. So as we are talking about informal logic, informal logic maybe later in your life, <clears throat> if you take it someplace else, or if we develop that class, uh, an argument is not a shouting match. An argument is just a list of reasons that you have for a specific conclusion. Now your reasons should be sentences that are true or false, and your conclusion should be a sentence that's either true or false as well. But we'll talk about that later. But let's start from the beginning. An argument can be about anything. And we are surrounded by arguments in our own lives all the time. So for example, here's an argument. Um, I'm voting for Stevens. because he makes me happy. I'm voting for Stevens because he makes me happy. Now this is an argument. <clears throat> Sorry for the mouth breathing and stuff. I've got a sinus infection. Um, and you might be thinking, why is he telling us that? Shouldn't he just be giving us information? 
but you you shouldn't be thinking that way. I'm a human too. I'm a human. <laughs> Weird. Okay, so anyway, this is an argument. I'm voting for Stevens because he makes me happy. Now, when thinking about arguments, we need to figure out what the premises are and what the conclusions are. Well, every argument is about an issue. There is an issue that's being discussed in every argument. And what is the issue here? Well, an issue can often be stated as a question. So here, the issue is, should I vote for Stevens? So the issue is, should I vote for Stevens? The answer to the question of the issue from the argument is usually the conclusion. So what is the answer for this person who's saying this? I'm voting for Stevens because he makes me happy. What is the answer to the issue, should I vote for Stevens? Correct. If you said that the person is voting for Stevens. So this person says, I'm voting for Stevens, so the answer is that the person's voting for Stevens. Now, if you just remember what I said, the answer to the issue is often the conclusion of the argument. And so here, the conclusion of our argument is that I am voting for Stevens. So we're putting that in blue. I'm not sure if that's going to show up well on the video. But this is the conclusion. So we'll call that the C. The conclusion. I'm voting for Stevens. Now, whatever the answer to the issue is, is your conclusion. The premises are the things, are the reasons why that you're holding your conclusion. So what is the reason why this person is voting for Stevens in this example? Well, the reason why is he makes me happy. So here in red is our reason. Now, we might have multiple reasons for holding a position. We might have 20 reasons. And the reasons themselves can support each other and be conclusions of arguments and propositions. So in this case, I'm voting for Stevens because he makes me happy. If we were to break this down into conclusions and premises, we see here that the conclusion is I'm voting for Stevens and the premise is or the reason he makes me happy. Now this word because is interesting. Because <laughs> okay, the word because is interesting because it is a premise indicator word. So when you see the word because, you, I want you to think premise. Or again, another name for the premise is the reason that you believe something to be true or the reason that supports your conclusion. So when you see the word because, often what follows the word because is a premise. So we can look out for these premise indicator words and conclusion indicator words. Another premise indicator word is since. So usually what follows the word since is a premise. Uh, another word, is, or another premise indicator is for the reason that, that, that one's pretty easy to see, but just the word for, for dot 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 often indicates a premise. Can you guys think of any conclusion indicator words? What are some conclusion indicators? The most famous probably is therefore. So we have premise indicator words. In this argument, we don't have a conclusion indicator word. Our conclusion is just stated directly here. But arguments do have conclusion indicator words. So one of the conclusion indicator words is therefore. This is probably the easiest one to see and the most commonly used. Therefore, dot, dot, dot. Whatever follows, therefore, will be a conclusion. Or, it follows that is another example. It follows that 
whatever follows it follows that is often a conclusion of an argument. So that's just a little intro to the premise indicators and the conclusion indicators. Um, but keep that in the back of your mind as you're trying to figure out the structures of arguments. Let's try another one. Since all dogs are mammals, All mammals must be dogs. Since all dogs are mammals, all mammals must be dogs. <coughs> Sorry about that. All right. Now this is a, a kind of a tricky one. Since all dogs are mammals, all mammals must be dogs. Now, I just told you about the word since. And hopefully you remember that the word sense is what kind of indicator? Is it a premise indicator or a conclusion indicator? If you said premise, you're correct. If you say conclusion, you're incorrect. <laughs> okay, so since all dogs are mammals, all mammals must be dogs. Well, what follows a premise indicator is often the premise. So in this case, our premise is all dogs are mammals. That means that our conclusion is the other proposition in the sentence, which is all mammals must be dogs. So this is our premise, all dogs are mammals. And our conclusion then in this argument is all mammals are dogs. Another way to say must be is are. If you are something, then you must be that thing. Let's not talk about free will right now. Okay, so all dogs are mammals, therefore all mammals are dogs. Now what we've done here is we found the premise and we found the conclusion. Now some of you in your head are probably thinking something. What is that thing that you're thinking? Well, you're thinking that this is a pretty bad argument, right? Because it's not the case that all mammals are dogs. It is the case that all dogs are mammals, but not all mammals are dogs. Well, it's okay to have a bad argument, right? What we do in logic is we analyze arguments. We don't care too much about evaluating whether or not they're true or not. That'll come later in life when we're actually interacting with other people. Right now, we're just focusing on the argument itself. Now, if somebody said this argument to you, um, and now that you've, you've seen this example, you know that this argument is not a good argument. And the reason why is because the conclusion is not true in this case. Now, this looks like a pretty, this is a pretty simple example, but if somebody were to say, um, well, all, all women are people who should, you know, be silent in church or something. Therefore, all the people that have to be silent in church have to be women. That, that, right, that's like a little bit different example where it's like not quite as clear. Now, of course, um, I don't believe that all women should be silent in church, and I don't believe that you should believe that either. Um, uh, but I just use that example because that might be an argument that you hear from somebody else telling you that. But in your mind, you can say, well, that's an invalid argument, right? That's, um, that's not a, a logically coherent argument. Let's just say that right now. Uh, so if we were to actually, and there are different ways in logic that you can analyze things. And there are these really fun things called Venn diagrams. Um, 